You know, I've been making a lot of videos and doing a lot of live streams about our power stations. But since I live in a big city and power outages are pretty rare for me, I rarely get to even use these power stations. So since we get a lot of comments asking for a proper test, I'm gonna use the Mega One to power all my devices today and see how it goes. Let's get into it. All right, let's power this bad boy up. So as you can see, it's not at 100% right now, and that could be for a few different reasons. Of course, if you used it and haven't charged it, that's probably why. However, once the power station's on, it's using power for both the screen and connectivity. And turning on the AC section also uses some power, even if you have nothing plugged into it. Another reason is that every lithium battery, like the lithium iron phosphate battery found in every mega series power station, do eventually lose power over time, whether or not they're in use. So if you wanna use your Mega One for a 24 hour blackout or a similar situation, make sure to check on it, especially if it's been sitting on a shelf for a while to make sure it's fully charged. So let's charge it up to 100%. There are five ways to do this. The first way is to use the included wall charging cable to charge via AC grid power. You can also use the Anderson port right next to it to charge via solar panels. The third way is to combine AC and solar charging, which is by far the fastest way to charge any mega series power station. You can also use the included cigarette lighter to Anderson cable to charge via your car. And finally, you can also use the Opus E1600 gas generator to charge your Mega One. But I'm just gonna go with option number one and plug it into the wall to charge. All right, I got it plugged in, let's start charging. All right, it's starting to charge up. It's also starting to make a little bit of noise now that the fan is on. It's getting more and more power. All right, the input wattage seems to be settling around 1,400 watts, which is the advertised input wattage for the AC charging. You can actually go set this down in another room and monitor it via the new Cleanergy app. From the app, you can also adjust the charging speed. So say I wanted to go to slow charging, I could do that right now, and it will slow down the uh, AC input. As you can hear, it's dropping wattage and slowing down the fan, so it's going into slow charging mode, which seems to be settling at around 730 watts of input. But I think I wanna go back to fast charging. You can find the Cleanergy app on both the App Store and the Google Play Store. All right, the app is telling me that we're at 97% and we are. You may notice that the input wattage slows down as we get closer to 100%. That's because all of our power stations slow down the charging speed as we get close to the end. This is to protect the battery and calibrate capacity levels which is super essential for lithium iron phosphate batteries to make sure the power station lasts as long as possible. So we're here now at the park. Let's do a quick solar panel test while we're here. As you can see, I've got my 240 watt solar panel right here, as well as my Opus Mega One charged around 30%. And uh, we're gonna charge her up and see how it does. So as you can see, it's a partly cloudy day outside today. Uh, it's around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And we have our Opus 240 watt solar panel right here. Uh, and our Mega One is charging at around 185, 190 watts currently. Now, unfortunately, I can't show off both charging with solar and AC power, uh, but by far that is the fastest way to charge, especially on a great day like today. Now that it's charged up fully to 100%, let's test out what it can and can't run. Starting with some lower wattage devices, I have here my cell phone, an Apple Watch, and a flexible pair of headphones. The Mega One comes with six USB ports, including four USB-A ports and two USB-C ports. If I press the DC button, it turns on the USB ports and allows me to charge up to six devices at the same time. And as you can see, with three devices plugged into the USBs, it's charging them with absolutely no problem. Underneath, we have four AC outputs. So if I press the AC button, all four of them will turn on at the same time. I have here my laptop, my cell phone, and a fan. Let's see how it does with all three at the same time. As you can see, it's handling all these devices with absolutely no problem at around 75 watts of output. Let's not forget though, the Mega One also has a 12 volt output for devices like 12 volt fridges. All right, now we've got some pretty power hungry devices to test one at a time here. All right, the electric kettle is using around 1,040 watts right now. The air fryer is pulling 1,690 watts. The heat gun on low is using around 600 watts. And if I change it to high, it spikes to 1,400 watts. The space heater on low uses around 760 watts. And on high, and on high, it's using around 1,600 watts. The Mega One is a 2,000 watt power station, which means it's capable of 2,000 watts of power output. But what happens if you try to exceed that? Let's try that out right now. Let's do the space heater and keep on theme the heat gun. So we're gonna turn the space heater on high, which uses, whoa, spiked up to 1,800. It's going back down 1,600. 
And then let's turn on the heat gun. The power station safely turns off. As you can see, the power station will automatically stop powering the devices in order to protect itself and your devices. This happens if the power draw exceeds what the device is capable of, hence 2000 watts. All right, right now I have this light behind me plugged into the Mega One, the Mega One plugged into the surge protector, and the surge protector plugged into the wall. When you plug a device into the Mega One and the Mega One into the wall, it enters what is called UPS or uninterrupted power supply mode. Basically right now, power is not being supplied to the light via the Mega One's internal battery. It's actually being passed through from the wall. But in the event of a blackout or power outage, the Mega One will detect it in 0.02 seconds and switch from the wall power to the internal battery. But why believe me when you can see it for yourself? In order to simulate a blackout, I'm gonna turn off the surge protector, which will cut power to the Mega One. Let's see what happens. Ready? Let me know down in the comments if you saw even a flicker from this light. Overall, the Mega One can power a pretty sizable portion of my daily household. It may not be enough to power everything all day, but considering its price and its size, it's not made to do that. The Mega One is an affordable 72-hour emergency survival unit. It's a basic backup power system with a lightweight body and still expandability with a B2 battery. Opus often offers sales for the Mega One and its bundles. So you should be able to get a brand new Mega One for around $400, which is definitely a steal for what you get. And that's it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.